Well, I would like to um, thank Ms. Catherine Tompkins for being a part of the 2018 Lucy Craft Laney Oral History Project. This project is in conjunction with um, the Watson Brown Foundation out of Thompson, Georgia, who was gracious enough to award us a grant to document the stories of important Augustans. This is also in conjunction with Mustard Seed Video Production Company. And so I wanted to thank both of those entities before we get started. But more importantly, Ms. Tompkins, thank you for being a part of this. Okay. All right. Ms. Tompkins, I wanted to first start out by asking you, um, could you state just for the record of your full name and when you were born, the year, and where you were born? My name is Catherine Leverett Tompkins. I was born in Lincoln County, Georgia, the year of 1928. Very good. And you told me uh, off camera, Ms. Tompkins, that uh, at a very early age, um, you moved with your mom to Augusta from Lincoln. You were three years old, correct? Mm -hmm. So as you came to Augusta and you began to become a part of the Augusta community, what are some of your earliest recollections of growing up in Augusta? Okay, my parents separated and my mother br brother that lived in Augusta at that time sent for her to come to Augusta. So they moved my mother from Lincoln, Georgia to Augusta. I was three years old during that time. At that time, I was just in Augusta. I wasn't in school until I was three, six years old. And then I went to the primary, what they call primal during that time. And from there, I went to this, uh, the second grade. And from there, I went to first grade, and from there until I graduated from, that, at that time they had classes for you, graduated and go to high school. And I graduated from there and I went to high school. At that time it was A.R. Johnson High School. That's where I went. From the A.R. Johnson High School, I went to um, Haynes, and from Haynes I went to Laney. We're going to get to all of that, you know, Haynes and Laney. We'll talk about that in a second. But can you sort of fill in a little bit of information for me in the early days? Uh, tell me a little bit about um, maybe, you know, your, your parents, you know, their name, your uncle. Tell me a little bit about that dynamic. My mother was named Georgia Blunt Leverett. And uh, she was, the type of work my mother did was washing and ironing for the white folks. Okay, and um, she did that for many years. And um, my father, he wasn't with us. He was in McCormick, South Carolina. So I, I grew up without a father. And um, my mother did housework and washing and ironing with Miss, a lady that ran this little place. She was named Henrella Lowe. I don't know if anybody remember Miss Henrella Lowe that used to live down there on uh, Allen Street in Augusta, Georgia. And she used to take in washing and ironing for the, for the white folks. And my mother used to work with her doing that. And then I grew on up and uh, I went to, um, my, I, oh, I had uh, sisters and brothers. I had, uh, three sisters and two brothers. And um, they went to school, but neither one of them finished high school. I was the only one in my family that finished high school. The only one and the youngest. And the youngest one. The youngest, the youngest one. How about that? Now, earlier you mentioned your uncle that you moved to Augusta to live with. Who is he and where did he live? Will Blunt was his name, and he lived it on Boy Scout Road in Augusta, Georgia. Okay, 
he lived on Boy Scout Road. And when we moved, we during that time, you would live on places that were owned by the white folks. I guess you would call them the plantation or something where you lived. And so we lived on uh, Boy Scout Road, too, okay. way back, years back ago. But my uncle, he lived it on Boy Scout Road also, and his name was Will Blunt. Uh -huh. And he's the one that brought my mother to Augusta. So earlier you mentioned that you started out, um, I, I know I've heard this term used before, mm -hmm. but we don't use it anymore, and so I'm glad you brought it up. You said that you started out going to Primer. Yeah, they don't use that. Don't know. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. So, Ms. Tompkins, tell me a little bit about your time at the very famous Weed School. I entered Weed School, I can't recall the year. But I remember the teacher, the first teacher I believe I had that was named Mrs. Thomas. And I went, well, we just had the little books, you know, with the little reading books and things like that. And then um, at we school, we used to, Mrs. I, she used to be a, do the cooking and you had little cooking classes that Weed school years ago, and then at weed school years ago, they used to have a, a soup kitchen, and you would eat at the soup kitchen. Now that would be a bowl of soup and a piece of cornbread, which was really good during that time. That's what we had to eat at weed school. What were some of the subjects you mentioned reading? But what were some of the other subjects you were taught uh, at weed? We had um. The little boys and girls, but um, Take your time. let's see. Um, what about some of your friends that you grew up with at school? At, at weed school, yes, ma'am. Oh, some of my classmates, and most of them gone. Lunette Brigham, she was Lunette Miller during that time. Sheldonia Van Allison, Sheldonia was Sheldonia Allen. Roundtree, James Roundtree was my classmate also. And um, Freddie Bennett was one of my classmates. And um, mm -hmm. Cleona Bonwell, I don't know if the, um, she was one of my classmates. And um, <laughs> It's a plenty of little children, but <laughs> like I, I just have forgot the name. Well, I tell you what, Ms. Tompkins, you mentioned a lot of names. The only name that I personally know of because of my Greater Mount Canyon connection is Freddie Bennett. So I, I, I know Freddie Bennett. Uh -huh. I remember that name. You mentioned a lot of your classmates. Mm -hmm. Well, let me ask you this. Outside of the classroom, what were some of the activities that students engaged in at weed school. I know a long time ago, you all used to do things we don't do anymore, like May Day. And yeah, we had May Day and we had, um, um, we would have all type of little games. Uh, years ago, we used to, uh, in the, the lower grades, we had um, uh, let me see, let me see what we had. We used to play, uh, during that time, we also played bingo, shoot marbles, and uh, the boys would shoot marbles. And we had a May Day, like you just said, wrapping the maypole. And um, I, I bet you I know one that you, you engaged in. Uh, what, what about like different plays? Did y'all put on different plays? We used to have many plays. Like every week, of, 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 at the end of the week, we would have a play, a little, little play, and then, the, you know, the teachers would present the little play. We had to learn the poems. We had to recite them, too. And um, if we were in the play, we had to learn our parts. There wasn't no standing up reading off the paper. We had to learn those parts and, uh, you know, recite them. Okay. Mm -hmm. And every time I talk with someone who went to weed school, they often talk about it with a fondness. So 
talk about what? Yeah, they just talk about it. They really enjoy. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it was good at Wheat School. Well, I tell you what, Ms. Tompkins, let's do this. Let me sort of transition um, a little bit to talk about sort of a wider picture, and that is not just Weed School, but growing up on what we call the Hill, Sand Hills. What was that like for you, growing up in that environment? Growing up on the hill, we enjoyed it because that's all we knew was the sand hill. We had the stoves to go to, Barry Stowe, and most of the stores on the hill during my growing up days was Chinese stoves. You know, only Wu Dun, you know, Lobo, all of those was the Chinese stoves, and those are the stoves we went to. And we in the playgrounds in the afternoon, we would go to the playground. And Safroni Greenleaf used to be the supervisor over the playground down at Weed School. They go there in the afternoon to play and do games and things like that in the afternoon. Okay. And they had different teachers over the programs. Mm -hmm. Who were some of your neighbors growing up uh, on the hill, the Sand Hills? Who were some of the people you remember that you interacted with on the hill? Okay, I grew up with Sarah Johnson. And my, her children, we all go, Sarah Johnson, she was, ma she was married to Lawrence Johnson. They had four girls. And so we all grew up together there. And I had, um, when I grew up and got married and all, we, going to that, we grew up and got married. And um, I had six children. My husband was Clarence Tompkins, the, the third. And, um, I, I enjoy growing up on the hill because we know we had nowhere to go but to those three stoves I just gave you a name of. And we used to go to Barry's store all the time, and that was right up on Wheeler Road. Really and truly, it was the little building next door to Greater Mount Kingham Baptist Church, but they have toned it down there. That was Barry's store, and that, that's where we went most of all the time, to Barry's store, B-E-R-R-Y, Barry's store. Mm -hmm. Other than the uh, Johnson family, um, were there any other families that you remember? <laughs> Both of the Johnson family and the Stalins family, and um, we all grew up together right there on the hill. Um, the Bennett family, we all grew up together too. Well, you know, Ms. Tompkins, you mentioned something that's quite important, not only to your uh, history, but also to my history. So I think this is a wonderful, wonderful segue into something, another topic. You just mentioned Greater Mount Canaan Baptist Church. How did your family become connected with Greater Mount Canaan? Why Greater Mount Canaan versus the other churches? Because it was nearer. <laughs> we didn't have no transportation. Okay. We had to be where we could walk. Okay. And so we were able to walk to Greater Mount Camp. Where we're sitting at right now. Okay. That's where we started off in that church. And that's where I'm still there. Out the years I started, I've never been anywhere else but the Greater Mount Kingham Baptist Church. And uh, under the pastor, I was, I, I joined under the pastor, Reverend G.L. Gaines. That's what's the first, the pastor I joined on, and now we have a, a different pastor. Do you want the names of him? Sure. Um, well, on, since I've been a member of a Greater Mount Kingdom, I've been on the Reverend B.I. Werner, Reverend Coley, well, Reverend Thomas, and Reverend Anderson. Okay. Okay. Now, those are the, uh, the pastors i been on there and I'm still there. And Reverend Anderson is the present pastor now. Okay. Reverend, not Reverend Anderson, Reverend Victor Thomas is the pastor now. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you what, Ms. Tompkins, um, I think we, the two of us are on the same page today because you mentioned a name that I was going to bring up anyway. So I was going to bring up one, well, actually two pastors, mm -hmm. two, two I'm going to bring mm -hmm. up. So the first name, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a name, and I'd like you to tell me a little bit about what you recall about that individual. 
So the first pastor from Greater Mount Canaan that I want to mention to you is Reverend Nathaniel Irvin. Reverend Nathaniel Irvin, we would say he was a God sent man. We just loved him. He was interested in his members. He wanted his members to love the Lord and do good. And he taught that to us. He just, he just, he just for love and to, to do right thing, to do the right thing, Reverend Nathan Irvin. What was something, maybe one or two things that separated him that made him different from other pastors? He took time for his members. He had plenty of time for his members and he would visit his members. He would make sure that they were doing well. I remember every child I had, he would always come to the house to see me, to see how I'm doing. He was a good, the children, I remember when he decided that he was going to retire from the church and he, we had a program and he came in and that was, he was leaving the church. And the children was crying as much as the uh, all the people was crying. Nobody wanted to see Reverend Irvin leave Greater Mount Camp, yes. but he had a he had to go. So he went to Old Stone Branch, yes. and that's where he stayed until he, he was deceased. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Reverend Irvin certainly was cut from a different cloth. Nobody else. Yes. Can take his place. I, I totally agree. <laughs> My second name that I'd like to um, ask you to recall uh, some remembrances of is Reverend B.I. Vernon. Yeah, Reverend Vernon, he didn't stay long. He came, for, he was there for a short time. Okay. And then after Reverend B.I., and he was a very good pastor. He made him feel, I never will forget what he said once when he was there. He, he said he didn't come to our church looking for a lady because he had Three, y'all. Uh, three ladies already. Okay, okay. I never will forget him saying that. All right. So he had his little family. Okay. And he didn't stay long, so he had to leave, so he left. And then after he left, came Reverend Co uh, Coley. Reverend Coley came after he left. Now, now did Reverend Irvin come before Reverend Coley? Oh, yeah. Reverend Irvin, okay. I'm sorry. No, no, you're fine. Uh -huh. Reverend Irvin was there before Reverend Vernon and all of them. Okay. Yeah. So Reverend Reverend Irvin stayed with us twenty two years. That's right. And uh, you can I can always remember Reverend Irvin how many years he stayed with us because he was such a inspiring person. He was a person you can't forget. <laughs> I think one thing that people tell me about Reverend Irvin seems to separate him is that his ministry went beyond just the church. So he, he was always in the everywhere. He, he practiced what he preached mm -hmm. in the pulpit. Mm -hmm. and that's what I always seem to remember. About. Yeah, he was there where he visited everybody. He didn't have no special person. He was um, all, it was all around person. So, Ms. Tompkins, describe for me sort of a, a typical Sunday at Greater Mount Kenyon. You know, I, I, I of course recall mm -hmm. what my Sundays used to be like, mm -hmm. you know, getting up at six in the morning, getting ready for Sunday school. But from your, through your eyes, what was it like being a part of the Greater Mount Kenyon family? For my, I enjoy being a member of Greater Mount Kenyon and the church family. I didn't have no, nothing but, I enjoyed it. It was something I enjoyed. I enjoyed getting my children ready and walking up the street every Sunday morning to Sunday school and to church. And, and um, I remember I would have a little string of children walking with me up to the church and people would say how nice they were looking. Say, Miss Tompkins, you really have those children looking so nice. And they went to church. They didn't say they didn't want to go. They went. And they enjoyed it. And they had different little things in the church, you know, Bible study. And I remember our first Bible study at Great Amount King, we didn't have black teachers, we had white teachers that came in the church and taught Bible study to us. Wow. <laughs> that was way back in the years. Yeah, we had white teachers. Mm -hmm. 
And now, uh, I, I will say this about our church. We had so many pastors there, and there's been so many changes with the different pastors coming in and going. They destroyed all the history. We don't have any history of everything that went on back there with the Deacon Sanders and Miss Sanders and all those people was there. We don't have any history all that that they de got rid of with all those different pastors in and out. Yeah. They got rid of the whole history. So we don't have any history. If you, if I wanted to go back and look for something, for, I wouldn't be able to find it because we don't have the history. I, I, that, that, Even that pipe organ, we used to have the pipe organ. Yes, they put that on the, tr on the trash truck. Mm. That's a problem that I sometimes <laughs> run into when I'm trying to help a church history, mm -hmm. then you lost a lot of it. All the history is Someone like you can help us to reclaim mm -hmm. a lot of that through your recollections. Mm -hmm. Ms. Tompkins, do you by chance remember where, what church those, um, the white Sunday school teachers came from? I, I don't remember. We were so young during that time, oh, you I know. See, I, see. I, I, I can't remember. I wish I could remember. Like I say, the history is gone. So we we don't have it. But more than likely, it probably came from one of the other churches. They came from some, some of the. Of the probably. They probably, huh. but they were our. I remember them being our first Bible teacher. How about that? Mm -hmm. okay. So you've been actually you've been a member of Greater Mount Canaan since 1931, 32. All of my life. Okay. Mm -hmm. How about that? So um, what what were some other um, activities, things that you all would do at church, both inside the church and outside the church. And Ms. Tompkins, how did you all interact with some of the other churches on the hill? Well, during that time, back there years ago, we didn't really interact with any of the churches. We, well, our, Mount Cam was out, Mount Cam, Elam was Elam, and all of us. But now I remember at our church, we used to have fish fry. Chicken selling fish and <laughs> for selling chicken sandwich and fish sandwich to raise money to help with the church. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And during that time, you paid in church what you want to. You didn't have no special amount to put in church. But now, you know, it's different. You should tithe, and I think that's good too. I don't have anything with, I think, should to pay you up 10%. Mm -hmm. well, that's good. Yeah, I, I definitely have a lot of fond memories of Greater Mount Canaan. Mm -hmm. I know that you were there much longer than me, so I know you definitely have <laughs> a, a lot of fond memories. So earlier in the interview, Ms. Tompkins, you mentioned that you went to weed school initially, but then after weed school, you made your way to A.R. Johnson, mm -hmm. Haynes, mm -hmm. and, and then later on Lane. Lane. So what was that experience like as a young person going off to those schools? Well, going to those schools and, and we were on the hill and they were downtown. Most of the time we had to, really and truly, we had to ride the bus. And riding the bus, we have to walk up to a Mount Center and catch the bus. Oh. And then riding the bus, sometimes we'll get on the bus, school children going to different schools. And if we sit on the front seat, they would tell us to move to the back. So we had to move to the back and have a seat in the back. But um, it was, we enjoyed it, but you know why we enjoyed it? Because we didn't know no different. We, knew, we just knew we had to go to school. We knew we had to ride the bus, um, you know, and so that's what we did. And then later years, you know, when the schools integrated and then they, the bus, would pick up the children and take them to the different schools that they had to go to. So once once you were able to get down to A.R. Johnson and Lane, what what was that like? Who who were some of your teachers and friends, and what was just sort of the atmosphere of going to those schools? Just like I say, we enjoyed it because we didn't know any different. So we knew we had to go to school. So we just made the best of it. It was a distant 
works. Some went and some didn't. But uh, it, to me, it was really good. You learn different things. They used to have cooking. where you, They have classes where you would cook food, and we could eat there. And if, when you pay something, it wasn't probably nickel or a few pennies. You didn't have to pay no full amount like that. And we enjoyed it. I, I enjoyed it since I knew I had to go to school. Mm -hmm. So you, um, you said you went to Haynes, and of course Haynes was a private school. Uh -huh. That's what I told you, and I told you while I didn't yeah. finish that because the finance, on the account of finance. So upon mm -hmm. leaving Haynes, what did you do after that? I went, that's where I went to A.R. Johnson, graduated from A.R. Johnson. Okay, A.R. Johnson. And then after A.R. Johnson, is that where you went to work at Gefford's Drug Store? I worked at Gefford's Drug Store. Okay. Mm -hmm. Tell me, you know, I've heard so much about Gefford's, and I didn't know, growing up in Augusta, I didn't really know much about the downtown area, because mm -hmm. my parents were not from Augusta, mm -hmm. but I've always heard stories about mm -hmm. Gefford's Drug Store. Well, the building is still sitting there. That is true. That <laughs> the is building true. is still, well, like I told you before, I was, I worked at the soda fountain. Okay. But they had drugs as well, and now a young man used to ride the motorcycle and deliver the drugs when something, you know, like a prescription somebody called for. They had this guy that rode the motorcycle. He would take the to the to, to the ones that was unable to get to the drugstore. Okay. Mm -hmm. What were your duties and responsibilities at the soda fountain? Huh? What, what what all did you do while you were at the Drug so? uh -huh. Oh, I just would make hamburgers, get <laughs> hot dogs, and um, you know milkshakes and stuff like that. That's what we did at the soda fountain. Okay. Mm -hmm. How long did you stay at Jefferson? Uh, I must have. I didn't. I stayed there a good little while because even though the money wasn't good, but we needed whatever it was. So we, um, I stayed there. And after I left there, that's where I went to and, and got a full-time job and stayed on it for 38 years. Okay. That was the city and recreation of Augusta. Um, I always, was Gifford's like a meeting place? And you see a little bit of everybody? Everybody came to Gifford Drugstore because that's the only thing they had up there. Okay. Nothing but Gefford Drugstore, and everybody on, and especially on Sunday afternoon, everybody came to get ice cream, mm -hmm. you know, and whatever. Okay. Mm -hmm. nice. mm -hmm. What other things did Gefford sell to the community other than having the prescription? You know, uh, mostly whatever, not as much on us, but the s lotion, soap, and you know, stuff like that. Mostly, some of the stuff that the drugstore are doing right now is selling the, you know, the same things. Mm -hmm. Now, other than Gefford's, Ms. Tompkins, um, were there any other businesses in that area that you remember? Most people that I talk with, the first business that ever comes to mind, whenever I talk about Augusta during that time period, was the Lenox Theater. Yeah, the, with C. While I can't talk too much about that because I, I couldn't attend <laughs> because I didn't have any way to get to 9th Street. Oh, okay. uh -huh, but there was, I remember the Lenox Theater, okay. but there was, uh, there was nothing I could do because I couldn't get there. So, so uh, most of the time I didn't ever, I hardly ever attend that because we had no transportation or no way to get there. Okay. Mm -hmm. so but then they had that Catholic building where the Catholic um, on 12th Street, that building, I think it's still set there where the Catholic sisters and all used to live. Yes. That's, mm -hmm. yeah. that's where they, I think that building still sit it there. Is, uh -huh. And you would see them going and coming with, and it was interesting to see them with their, their uniform on and all. Yeah. They would go down to the school in, in the morning and come back to the building in the afternoon. Uh -huh. Now, I do remember that. Uh, it was a great reunion. <laughs> Oh, that is really nice. The first time I've heard someone talk about uh, the the uh, convent, mm -hmm. the, the convent. Right? That's yeah. what. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that mm -hmm. is really nice. So they would leave the convent in the morning and go down to a the, the school, the okay. teacher, mm -hmm. okay. the teacher. Come back. Mm -hmm. um, 
did you ever have a chance to talk and meet with them? Or mm -mm. You saw them at a distance. Mm -mm, just a distance. I was in a drugstore right across from. They were at. I think that building's still sitting there, isn't it? It is. It mm -hmm. is. As a matter mm -hmm. of fact, uh, a friend of mine is uh, hoping to purchase it uh, and, and renovate it. So okay. So I'm excited mm -hmm. about that. Mm -hmm. Mr. Thomas, I just thought about something. With you being at Gethers and knowing about the convent, then you probably remember Lavinia Pearson. Remember what? Lavinia Pearson. Oh, she was a beautician. Yeah, because her, her shop was right there. Yeah. On mm -hmm. that corner. Uh-huh, yeah. yeah. And I went to the lady there named Eileen. Yeah. Okay. I, Eileen was my beautician. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I remember Miss Pearson. Mm -hmm. uh, is there anything specific you remember about her? Like, like She was a good beautician, all I can remember. And the people <laughs> was people would come there and come there and you during that time it was good beautician your hair. They would take time with you with you and with your hair. Mm -hmm. Interested in your skin, your face skin, you have cream. Mm -hmm. They had different cream for different things like that. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. Pearson's somewhat of a legend uh, downtown. Mm -hmm. So um, anytime I can ask someone about it was she was very good. I'm great. telling you, she was good. That's great. Cause all of those ones that was working in that school, that she taught them, she was the teacher there. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. Mm -hmm. well, that's interesting, Miss Thompson. That that the convent story really that that just made my day. But listen, after Geffers Drugstore, I think you moved on to University Hospital, am I correct? Yeah. For a while. For a while. For a while. For a while. Now, now, before we get to the, your time with the Recreation and Parks, what exactly did you do as, a, were you a nursing assistant? Yeah, I helped the nurses. Oh, okay. That, what were your specific duties with that? Do what the nurses wouldn't do. <laughs> <laughs> they do. We do. We did what they told us to do okay. during that time. Okay. We had to. Just assisting the nurses, cleaning, making up beds, changing beds, making up beds. How did you get to university? How? The bus, walk up to Philemon Avenue and catch the bus. Okay. Mm -hmm. But you just, did they like post the job opening and you just... You just oh, how did I get the job? Yes, ma'am. Someone would always tell me about the job. And you know how I got the job with the recreation? Miss Dawson. I think she lived on the street y'all lived on. Okay. Miss Dawson. Okay. Um, what's her first name? You know who I'm talking about. Um, uh, Neon, Naomi. Oh, Miss Dorsey. Yeah, Dorsey. Dorsey. Uh huh. Yeah. I was St. Mary's. Yeah. 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 And, um, she, she was working in recreation too. Okay. She used to work in recreation years back. <clears throat> So I, one day I was at home, and she called me, and she said, Catherine, do you want a job? <laughs> I said, yeah. You know, that was a good job. Debbie T. Johnson was then over recreation for black folks. You had white, black, white recreation and black recreation. And so Debbie T. Johnson, he was the director for us. So she, taught, she said, come on to the center now. Right now, she said, because we need somebody. And so that's how I got into recreation. So you started out um, with the young people. With the um, children, all of the kindergarten. And, on and just sort of moved mm -hmm, on up. Mm -hmm. Now, what were some of your responsibilities during the 38 years that you worked with? Oh, them? Lord. I worked with so many different programs. They would send me here, send me there, and send me. <clears throat> working with the boys on the pl uh, playing ball, working all kind of activities I had to learn and work with. So that's what I did. And I worked my first, uh, I worked on the, the murders deeds. I don't know, if, I know you don't remember those names. Mm -mm. But you do remember Tommy Balls. Yes. Uh huh. And uh, the other one was not there anymore. Uh, I forgot his name. But those are the ones. And I, I did some everything in recreation because you had to do it because the children didn't have nothing to do. So on the playground, you had to have activity. And during that time, children came to the playground. 
they took part in the activities. But see, now you don't hardly see nobody on the playground, no children, especially no children. That is true. Mm -hmm. That is so true. Mm -hmm. Earlier, uh, Ms. Thompson, you were telling me about the, the one area that you really focused a lot of your energy on was when you moved up to working with seniors. So what were some of the activities you planned both here in the city and outside of the city for seniors? <clears throat> okay. All of the centers had to have arts and craft program. And I would check on those centers and make sure they had their arts and craft. But, and sometimes I had to participate with them. I, so I learned how to do a lot of things, wrecking and ceramics. That's what the seniors loved. That They loved it at ceramics. But then I took trips out of town and um, in town with the senior citizens. And the program was a very good program. I always had a group of seniors wanted to go somewhere. So we would go somewhere, and that's what we went to Canada, Niagara's Falls. We went to a lot of places with, I would take them on a bus trip. Mm -hmm. So they enjoyed that very good. But now, have none of that. None of that. Do you still, uh, I guess nowadays you're just kind of taking it easy, but do you still go back to see some of the people that you worked with? Well, a lot of most of those people I worked with uh, during that time, Roger, they dead. <laughs> they dead and gone. Now, Joyce Downs, do you know Joyce Downs? I've heard that name. She is doing some of the programs that I was doing, but it's never like it was. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And whenever I see the ones that's still here, they would say, Miss Tompkins, we sure miss you. You know, I'm doing different things with them. Yeah, see, that, that just speaks to someone who is fully dedicated, mm -hmm. and fully committed mm -hmm. uh, to their profession. Mm -hmm. So there'll probably never be another Captain Tompkins <laughs> at Parks and Recreation. Mm -hmm. uh, Ms. Tompkins, kind of coming full circle in the interview, you started out by talking about uh, your move to Augusta and growing up in Sand Hills. Could you tell me, sort of going forward, how has the hill changed from the time you got there to now? Well, there have been a change, <laughs> a lot of change. Because when I first, we first was living on the hill years back, way back, children, you know, had more respect and took up more time. But now they're not interested in anything. They do whatever they want to do. It ain't nothing you can do about it. They just do everything. But when we, I first lived on the hill, it was nice. The families was nice. We had nice neighborhood, nice family. Even though we had, I told you, we had ch Chinese stores, but that Chinese stores was a help for the, some of the older people because they could go to the Chinese store and get grocery and charge it and pay for it when they get their little checks. Uh -huh. So that's what was good for all of us, my parents and everybody, because we used to go to the Chinese store. They have the boys riding the bicycle, and you call up there and order what you want, and they would, the little boys would bring in the groceries or whatever you order from the Chinese store to your house. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You said that it's just things are just totally, that sense of community. It's just out of the, now, you're afraid to, oh, and one other thing I could say, we used to could go to bed at night, leave our doors open. We didn't have to lock up no doors and all that kind of stuff. I remember it was, we didn't have fans and out of condition like we have now. And um, if we get so hot in the house, we would just go and open the door and lay in the, well, the air could blow in on us from the outside. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Said not anymore. <laughs> not anymore. Ms. Tompkins, um, someone with your knowledge, wisdom of life, you may want to say something to the younger generation that they could then use in their life. So I would like to sort of 
bring a little closure to this by asking you if you had to give some advice to younger people, what would it be? If I had to give some advice to the younger people, I say, first thing I would say, love the Lord. After that, I would say, honor your parents. Then I would say, go to school, get an education, get all the education that you can so you'll be able to be independent in your life coming up. But most of all, your first thing you got to get, you got to get to know the Lord. You need to go to church where you can get some understanding about the Lord, attend church, Sunday school, Bible study, or whatever they're offering in the church, and love your parents. I think that's really good advice. That, that's that's something that I can take with me. <laughs> Hopefully, I've tried to do the same, do that in my life. Mm -hmm. um, but Ms. Tompkins, was there was there something you wanted to say or add before we close out? Is there <laughs> anything else? No. <laughs> well, well, listen, Ms. Tompkins, I think that uh, for me personally, it has been just a joy, uh, you know, uh, seeing you. I think this is the second time I've seen you in as many weeks. So uh, it's been a joy sitting talking with you. And uh, on behalf of the Lucy Craft Family Museum of Black History, the Watson Brown Foundation, and Muscle C Video Production, we thank you for your time and we thank you for your contributions to Augusta history. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me.